which so I was just I because the, there's that recent um was that they, they did a re or not a reboot but they did a a new Beverly Hills Cop movie a little while ago yeah right? Beverly Hills Cop Axel F yeah um and the, which which in, encouraged me or or uh, made me want to watch actually like I never really I, like watched the, the originals one. yeah I think there's three there are. Uh, the original ones. Guess what and, I did during the pandemic. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> but it made me realize I, I like the way that uh, Axel, for the two, for the two like cops. Yeah. That are like the actual cops in Beverly Hills. Yep. I Axel is basically like fills the role of like many pixie, manic pixie dream girl pixie dream, <laughs> dream girls. girls. Yeah. He just sort of like comes in and like shakes up their world <laughs> yeah they're like we love this we love spending time way. with him we need to be near him all the time in a fun way <laughs> yeah and then leaves and then he comes back you know like a few years later and they're like oh it's so great to have him back yeah we're, we're cop that things. was like the more most fun we ever had yeah with all those guns shooting people we shot yeah. dozens of people things are so boring without him around <laughs> we, we don't get to kill anybody <laughs> was, uh, was the fourth one good I haven't seen it yet uh, I would call it entertaining. Par for the course. All right. <laughs> Sometimes it, I just it was a, it was a Beverly Hills it's cop it's, movie. All right. <laughs> Sometimes I just need a movie to be entertaining, and I don't care if it's like you know high art, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. But I've been uh, I've been really I've I've been watching a lot of like interviews with Bill Hader recently because mm -hmm. this whole thing of Seth Meyers and then him interviewing his friends from Saturday Night Live. And then seeing what a good time they're having, and then like a like Lonely Island coming in, and like yeah, I never really gave Lonely Island their due, mm -hmm. and you start to realize it's like yeah, I start listening to the podcast and stuff, and then I also start listening to like Bill Hader interviews, and really getting like oh, he ended up at SNL almost by mistake, <laughs> like he, he, I mean he qualified and he was supposed yeah. to be there, but the only way he got in was because he was just he was in the same improv troupe or sketch comedy troupe in LA that Nat Offerman was in, which is like Nick Offerman's brother-in-law, and Megan Mullally came to watch yeah. uh, the show and really loved Bill Hader and like told her after the show, was like, you're really great. Like, uh, I'm gonna talk to you. Oh, great. Yeah, those yes. are bricks. Wow. I'm gonna go talk to like Lauren Michaels about you. And he's like, oh, okay, and then she does. And Lauren apparently was like, you should come out and you should do a, you should do an audition for us. You know, like, I'm slowly getting a Lauren Michaels impression because of I all the times I'm hearing everybody do Lauren Michaels because they all do Lauren Michaels. And I was just really like, this is crazy that, that it all went this way, but his whole thing is I didn't want to be on stage really because of the whole panic attack thing, like yeah. the anxiety and everything else, and he wanted to direct, he wanted to do a lot of those things, and now he's really into that whole part of his life. Yeah. It's like, I can do those things now because I got the stardom and I got understood. And, and so, like... His whole thing is, oh, I love, like, he went to the Criterion Closet and was picking out all these movies and everything, and I'm listening to him describe how much he loves all these movies, but they're all movies where I'm like, I could never bring myself to watch any of these because they sound terrifying to watch, mm -hmm. you know? Like, he, like, pulls, I think he was the one who pulled Salo off of the thing. He's like, great date movie. And I'm like, no! <laughs> what kind of date? Sorry. He's he's clearly kidding, but it's just like no, no, dude, like no, and and then he like brings about five or six other movies, and I'm just kind of like no, they sound terrible. He he came into the closet, and he's like oh, and he pulled House, mm -hmm. right, House Yeah. He pulled that off the stage. He's like, I love I love this movie. And he's like oh, and he unzips his hoodie, and he has a House Su shirt on. <laughs> like he'd forgotten he was wearing it, which was weird. He's just he's just a big he's a big fan of like horror movies. Right? Yeah, he's a big fan of like like suspense and thriller and horror and stuff and I was just kind of like, "Oh, I can't any of the stuff he's recommending is like I can never watch it. It would just be it would kill me." But but yeah, yeah, that that like I don't I don't care how good the movie is, even if it's that kind of thing. I just want to watch an entertaining movie more than anything else. So. So I with the you're talking about the the the, the Lord Michaels. Oh yeah. Thing. I I remember I saw I think it was an interview with Dana Carvey. Talking about how and and they sort of they, or it was him Dana Carvey and some of the other people and they're talking about how um, nobody could really do an impression of Lorne Michaels right until Dana Carvey did one and he sort of figured it out right. how to do an impression of Lorne Michaels and everyone's like oh that's how to do an impression of Lorne and then everyone just started doing Dana Carvey's impression of yeah. Lorne Michaels yeah 
Because <laughs> you hear Lauren talk, and it's kind of like in interviews or whatever, and it's like, I see where he got the little bits from. Mm -hmm. And they, I, I saw, I was watching interviews where they talk about doing in, uh, impressions of anybody. And sometimes it is just about trying to find the thing that you tease out mm -hmm. and say, just to accentuate that. And everyone will think that you're bang on. And it's like, you're not. You're doing a caricature of this person. But I've also heard, like, Bill Hader's Alan Alda impression. It's and Alan Alda was even like, you could, you could do my ADR. Like it, it's yeah, just like yeah, it's very good. Crazy how good it is. I love, I love they do those. You know, they, I, the whatever they call them, the sort of impression roulette kind of yeah. thing, sketches, where they'll be like, you know, try to figure out all the impressions that the current cast can do, and then just have them like, what if these people, uh, you know, uh, auditioned for Star Wars or you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. But and it was always it was funny because it would just be like. Because, you know, Bill Hader would be there doing Alan Alda. And it would be like, like, how long has it been since an Alan, Alan Alda impression has been, like, relevant? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people, like, do people even know what Alan Alda is like? Because yeah, he still shows up. It's a good impression. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen a lot of MASH? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, they, have, they still have plenty of episodes of it. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching it in the hotel earlier. Uh, I love MASH. I, I, love, um, I love when he talks about, when Bill talks about doing an impression and, he, and his thing is... Like they would give him an impression to do because he did his he learned his Alan Alda in one night, mm. and and I'm like it's so bang on that you know, but finding your like weaseling your way into that and I'm like he does so many voices and he does so many different and which impresses me because like for Quirkline, mm -hmm. I do a lot of different voices but I think at the core of every one of them you can hear me, mm -hmm. and I have had people tell me though too where where I've had people comment on it being like, oh man who's doing so and so is that Jer you know who's doing this person is yeah, that yeah. so and so. And it's like, no, Beej did all five of those voices. This Beej was in a conversation with himself on this episode of Corpon, right? <laughs> it's like, we can do that because we're cutting lines, right? We're editing yeah. it together. Um, and it's like, that has gotten me to be more serious about hearing how good people mm -hmm. are when they do an impression and being like, how can I train my voice to, to, to mask itself even better so that you can't tell it's me when I'm doing the thing? It's what I'd love to be able to do when I do more voices. I was actually one of the the recent corporal. I was actually laughing about that because I was like, "That's just Beach yeah. talking to himself, <laughs> <laughs> like multiple times yeah. in the same episode." Yeah. But you know, they, they say was it um, uh, Billy uh, Billy West? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, was talking about doing the uh, how he did the came, the voice for like Fry mm -hmm. is actually his voice. Uh, it's just like a sort of a slightly modified version of his voice. Cause he, mm -hmm. Because he was, uh, he he really liked the show, and he he's saying like if you try to do a voice, mm -hmm. like like he does like um, he also does like Popeye and stuff. Right. Yeah. So it's like if you do a voice, then somebody else can do that voice too, but it's really it's a lot harder for somebody else to do your real voice. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least a modified version of your real voice. So he was like. I really like this show. I don't want to be replaced. <laughs> so I'm going to do a voice that is really hard for other people to replicate. It's like, um, is it, who is it? Kathy Seagal? Se Kathy Seagal? Uh, uh, Katie Seagal. Katie Seagal, right. Who is also um, uh, Peg from uh, Married with Children. And she did uh, Leela's. Hey, it's just her voice. Bugsplot. Oh, nice. Hey. Awesome. Bugsplot. Um, that's like it's just her voice. Yeah. It's like way harder to, to uh, replace that. Wendy Malick yes. does a lot of voices too. Love you can't her. replace her because it's just her voice. Patrick Warburton. Oh yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, there are people though who do Patrick Warburton yeah. as an impression, yes. so it's like you could probably get someone to. And, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's Sean Benjamin. Yes. yes. God, oh. yeah. <laughs> he must be real easy to work with because he's everywhere. Yeah. Yes. The other thing that he talked about was uh, how he does, how you do um, pop. He's in problem with Popeye. Yeah. Is you go through they go they went through voice actors really fast because Popeye's the Popeye voice just destroys your vocal cords <laughs> that sort of like growl sort of that sort of growl until he figured out that you can actually do that voice he basically use does like Tuvan throat singing like he does oh. like that, that that like where you have like two you're hitting two notes at the same time yeah yeah and he's saying that's that actually creates the that, that makes the voice that does the voice uh, and it sounds good and it doesn't mess up your uh, your vocal cords and stuff so that's apparently that's how he does uh, Popeye now is, is like a 
Tuvan throat singing. That's <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. The um, he's the Alex Brightman, the the person who's uh, Beetlejuice, yes. since, and then also he does um, voice acting for Has Been and also Hell of a Boss and everything and right. uh, many other things too. But like he he has this very like very distinct voice that he does for this. And it turns out apparently he's like genetically designed for this. Yeah. Like something he found out that he can do that and it not mess up his voice and everything. I can't remember. He, I saw the video of him explaining mm -hmm. it and I cannot remember for the life of me what he said about mm -hmm. it. But yeah, he's like, I can do shows and then be perfectly fine. Like, it's so wild. Because then he'll switch. Like, his voice is completely different than when he's Beetlejuice and everything. And it's so wild. Because then, yeah, like, it's just like, whoa. It's like, I, it's like, I, it's just wild to think. But yeah, he's like, yeah, I can do this and just go off and be fine. Because yeah. he's like, perfectly designed for it. Mm. Uh, we're going to draw that.